Welcome to English Country Life. It's November on the Small Holding Homestead and it's unseasonably warm. So come and join us and we'll show you what we've been up to. Welcome, my name's Fiona and this is the November episode of our series The Self-Sufficient Year, Month by Month. Together with my husband Hugh, we run a small holding homestead here in South Lincolnshire in the UK. And the first month of November was taken up by this, this structure behind us. This is a fully netted enclosure for our chickens because living in England on the 7th of November, we had a housing order imposed for all poultry, which means that they need to be kept either indoors or in fully netted enclosure. So this was our solution, this 21 metre by 3 metre fully netted tunnel. Now that means that this area that we're in, the chicken field, is not in use by the chickens and that gives us a great opportunity because the temperatures this November are ridiculously high. It's very unseasonably warm. That means the grass is still growing so we can reseed all of those areas which the chickens have actually dug up during the summer months. So Hugh's going to be getting on with that. I'm also batch cooking because we've harvested a lot of the meals and food from the vegetable garden, but now I need to turn it into meals which we can very quickly go to either the pantry or the freezer, pick it out and just heat it back up. So we do tend to put a couple of days aside every single month and just batch cook and create meals which we can then easily grab. So we're not spending an hour at the end of the day or half an hour making up a meal. Hugh's also been doing a lot of log splitting because that reheating and cooking is done on our multi-fuel burner and actually that's got an oven attached and it's got two hot plates on the top but it needs fuel to make it work and we have a wonderful friend who's a tree surgeon who brings us essentially trees and because we've got the space to season them we actually take those trees from and cut them down and that means that Hugh needs to split them down a little bit more so that we can be heated in the house. And finally, we're getting ready for a fallow period in eggs because at this time of year, chickens start to molt, they go off lay for that. We've got a lot of youngsters as well who aren't old enough to start laying. So we are going to have a fallow period with no eggs at all. So while we've got them, I'm making use of them and I'm making a lot of things to pop in the freezer, which means we still have all the wonderful eggy meals which we've always wanted. So I'm going to show you how we do that. But let's get started with the grass re-sowing. Let's have a little secret between ourselves. I'm going to do something that you really shouldn't do. I'm in the main chicken enclosure. The chickens are all locked up in the flock down netted enclosure behind me, which means the main enclosure is empty. And chickens being chickens, they've scratched up some areas where it's dry under this cherry tree. They've made dust bars, they've destroyed the grass. And I want to get that reseeded before we bring the guys back out here after flock down. Now all received wisdom says seed your grass in the warm weather, in spring and in summer. But in spring and summer, the chickens are in here and I don't want to do it then, I want to do it now. And it's unseasonably warm this November and I'm going to give it a shot. Whether it'll work, we'll have to let you know after we've tried it, but I think it will. Now this cherry tree's dropped all its leaves. So first things first, I've got to get them all out of the way. Then I need to break the soil up, rake it out roughly flat, seed it, mix that seed in and roll it. So let's have a go at that.
In our October smallholder video, you would have seen the last of the summer vegetables being harvested from the garden. November is a month where we spend quite a bit of time making sure that those vegetables are stored properly. And actually what we tend to do is partially store the vegetables on their own, but we also do a lot of batch cooking. And the batch cooking has a massive advantage for us because it means we can spend an entire day out just working really hard in the garden and rather coming in at the end of the day and spending half an hour, an hour cooking, we're just getting something that's already prepared and we're just heating up, it makes a really, really easy meal. So what are the kind of things that we've been batch cooking? Well, later on, I'm gonna show you some of the things I've been doing with our eggs and explain why we are batch cooking those items. But here are some things which we have pressure cans. These are actually soups. I do pressure can other things. But this one is a tomato and lentil soup and it's done as a concentrate. So let me just show you, that's pretty solid. And that's because I'd need to add quite a bit of liquid to this to actually get it into an edible state. But that actually, because it's got lentils in it, you'd be surprised how filling that is. There's very little else needed with that. So great big doorstep of bread. That can actually be a main meal. And it uses all our own onions, all our own tomatoes, and I've added some chili in there because everything needs to have chili as far as I'm concerned. But this is a pumpkin soup. And as you can see, that's actually a lot more liquid. So that can be just heated up and served as is. And that'll be a nice light lunch. So what else are we doing? Well, I love, there's a dish, a Chinese dish, which is normally shredded beef and chilies with carrots. But we last year bought um, a venison from a sustainably raised herd. And the deer that we got, the entire deer, we actually stripped down and we got kilos of meat from this deer. And it was less than hundred pounds. So it was a very, very cheap way of feeding ourselves. And I did have some venison left over when I harvested the carrots from the garden. So I decided what I'd do is I'd do a venison version of that beef with chilies and carrots dish. Now, actually preparing that food is quite labor intensive because you have to cut the uh, venison into matchstick pieces. It needs to be coated in like a batter, then it needs to be fried up. We then need to prepare all the carrots and little matchsticks and it takes a long time. But if you do multiple meals in one go, it's actually a lot quicker. So what I do then is I get it into portions and believe it or not, this small vacuum pack bag is actually two portions of that meal. And all I need to do to cook this up is let it defrost. Then I can add some garlics, some chili, a soy sauce, balsamic vinegar, serve it with some rice or some noodles. That's a full meal for the two of us. It doesn't take really more than 10 minutes to get this prepared once it's defrosted, really, really straightforward. Other things that we were doing, so the deer, we also made an awful lot of chili, which uses our own onion, our own garlic, our own chilies, and it really does make a very, very good meal. And um, again, tortillas, um, fajitas, rice, good meal. Now this is a very large portion, so this is when we're expecting visitors. And the last thing that I'm going to show you is this, and this is actually pork bolognese, which uses our own tomatoes, our own chilies, our own garlic, everything in here. We have grown ourselves, with the exception of the pork, because we bought that from a friend of ours, Martha, who runs Heritage Breed Pigs free range in the Welsh countryside. And this is going to be cooked up tonight, not with any pasta, not with any spaghetti. I'm actually going to be serving it in a slightly unusual way. And what I'm going to be using is this, one of our butternut squashes. Now, all I'm going to do is roast this up, but I'm going to do it in two halves. So this actually becomes the serving dish for the pork. So let me show you how I do that.
log yard is not the prettiest part of the small holding, so apologies for filming it, but I think it's pertinent. When we set this place up, we wanted to be as self-sustaining as possible, and part of that was about fuel. We wanted to use local, renewable, and honestly, cheap fuel sources to cook and to heat the cottage, etc. So we set it up to be very much capable of using wood as our primary fuel source. And I'll tell you what, with fuel prices the way they're going, I'm ever so grateful that we did that. But something that happens in the winter time is that is when I like to cut and split wood. Partly because it's really hot work, particularly when you're in a chainsaw suit and you're lifting great bulks of timber around. But even just swinging an axe repeatedly is not something you want to be doing in 30 degree heat in the summer. So for me, logging and splitting is very much a winter job and we get it all under cover and let it season right throughout the warmer months. So it kind of works out. It also means it's a job we can do when we're not as busy in the garden, etc. It really is a good winter job to be getting on with. It's a good lot of time spent doing this work, but it does mean we have far less bills to pay. November is a period where we're making final preparations for a period of fallow egg production. So although I've got a chicken behind me who's singing the egg song, which means she's just laid an egg, we have a mix of young and old chickens. So now young chickens really aren't old enough to start laying yet, so we're not getting any eggs out of them yet anyway. And the older chickens are going into a period called molt. And if you don't keep chickens, molt is where they drop all of their old feathers and replace them with brand new ones. Now that takes a lot of protein and actually what they do is redirect the protein that would have been used to create eggs to actually grow feathers instead. And it's designed so that they go into winter, the coldest period of the year, with really toasty warm brand new feathers. So what are we doing to prepare? Well, we are making use of the XX eggs excess eggs that we've got to make baked goods and baked goods that will store or freeze really really well and what I'll do is I'll make four or five quiches for example and one quiche will go in the oven sorry into the fridge for eating straight away and the rest will actually get cut up in slices and popped in the freezer and this one is cheese onion tomato and bacon quiche and this is absolutely delicious because it uses huge homemade um, bacon and we do have a video on that. I also make up a load of cake so once again I'll make up a cake for us to eat but then I'll cook three or four more so I'm not wasting any of the heat in the oven either. This one actually is a frozen apple cake and all it is it's a Victoria sponge which has cooking apples cut up into small chunks or slices in the cake mix when it goes into the oven. And what happens is that um, cooking apple then becomes really soft as the cake cooks and you get a really lovely gooey sweet apple cake. It's fantastic. But we also eat a lot of um, omelettes and have a lot of scrambled egg and if we've got no eggs being produced we also want to be able to make those. It's a very simple solution. You whiz up um, eggs in a liquidizer and then we will actually put 12 eggs in a liquidizer and then pour them into 12 muffin moulds and then we know that each muffin mould essentially holds the equivalent of one egg. Now it's really important to whiz up the egg completely because if you freeze an egg with the yolk on its own and the yolk actually goes really hard and if you freeze the egg the white once it's defrosted will go really runny but if you whiz it up and liquidize it honestly it works incredibly well so we can still have scrambled eggs and omelettes using these frozen eggs once they're defrosted but I can also use them for baking so if I do run out of quiche if I do run out of cake I can still use those as ingredients in those ready items so there's some ideas and hopefully you've got some ideas there for what you can do too. Well, that's it from a re 
ridiculously warm November episode. But we are still in autumn and I think winter's going to get quite a bit colder. Can't stay as warm as this all winter, surely. We have got oh, some seasonal content coming up for you. We're going to do something on seasonal gifts for small holders because we are quite hard to buy for. And there's a few things that we know about that I think any small holder would love to get. And we're also going to do the self-sufficient Christmas dinner. But if you've got other ideas of what you'd like to see, let us know what they are in the comments down there. And we'll try and include it in future episodes. If you've enjoyed today's content, can you spare us five seconds? Give us a thumbs up down below. And if you'd like to see all the new videos that we've got coming up, tap on subscribe and the bell next to it. It's totally free, but you'll be told every time we upload a new video. For today, thanks for watching. Come back and see us soon. Take care.